Well, folks, I'm broke. I went way over my budget for this week's haul. Uh, way about way too much stuff, and still have stuff coming in. That is the crazy thing. So yeah, that's going to have to go on file for a little bit. I'm Pokean Joe, and as always, you're pretty cool for coming by. Let's talk about some comic book hauls that I got this week. Uh, got a little bit of everything across the board, and like I said, I still have some things being delivered to the house. There was just so much out there this last Wednesday to buy. I didn't know where to start, so I did the comic book collector rookie mistake and just bought it. I'm stupid. <laughs> but that's okay. Let's take a look at what we got. And if you want to hear a review about these comic books, we will be doing that on Blasted or Stash It Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where myself and a panel of comic book enthusiasts will sit and talk about what we've read, what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, and of course, should you blast it or should you stash it? Um, so yeah, that's some good stuff there. So don't miss out on that. Again, Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time time blaster stash it. so to get on with the haul let's talk about as guardians of the galaxy uh number six man i love this cover they had you know this has been a great story so far with the kid yoki or loki um being mischievous and always having a secondary plan it's it's kind of refreshing to see him as a kid because i always thought he was kind of childlike to begin with that was weird right um next we got uh batman number 64 i went with this variant right here i know some people are not fans of the sideways variant but i really dug this i thought this was cool um so why not uh, next, Conan number three. I like where this story is leading. We got some intriguing uh, things kind of happening in the background with this, with the Scarlet Witch character. This has been very interesting. And plus these two little twin kids walking around that have some role to play, even though we're not very clear on what they are. Hopefully this issue breaks it out a little bit. But in this issue from the summary, we find out what happens when you, a minor crime, and how it can turn into your death. Like, that's, that's kind of deep. But we'll see where that goes. Cover swipe of the week. Uh, we went ahead with Deadpool with this kind of heart missing out of it. I really enjoy this. This is Deadpool number nine. Um, I just thought it was a funny cover, so I figured why not. We'll take a look through it. I kind of go off and on in the Deadpool thing when it's convenient to me. Uh, Female Furies, number one. Can't wait to read this. This is going to be some good stuff. It's going to bring back some of these characters that we don't really get to know a whole lot about with Granny Goodness and her little team there and where it happens uh, when they're left up to be the final defense or the attacking force or whatever they're going to talk about in this book. I guarantee it's going to be action-packed. Hopefully they tell a good story with it. Some of you know how particular and critical I can be about a story. Hopefully, they don't get weird with it. That's what we're hoping for in that one. Uh, next, uh, oh yeah, Green Lantern number four. I kind of like where this story is going. It's kind of harping on this cosmic nihilism and the uh, overall aspect of humanity of, you know, if you give them powers, then everybody's okay on Earth. You know, they don't really care what this world eater is going to do at the end. Not really sure how I feel about that, but let's get into the cosmic nihilism of it where we're just insignificant dusk and anything can happen to us at any given moment, except for our one hero, Green Lantern himself, stepping up and uh, fighting for Earth, even though they don't want to be safe. It's a weird comment, but it's been an interesting read. Uh, next, we got Gunhawks. I am a sucker for old Western comic books, and uh, Marvel's been doing their thing where they've been kind of revamping the horror stories to sci-fi, and finally we got a good Western story, so I can't wait to get that. I went with this cover. Um, they had the Scrolls cover as well. I'm, I don't really... Uh, all the Scroll covers, I'm kind of just not into it. I really wanted something so more pristine. I don't know what's going on with the Black Panther thing in the background. We'll read it. Maybe he's a character in it. Maybe he's not. I don't know, but uh, regardless, we're going to get some good Western stuff in it. And I flipped through it earlier, and the artwork's actually pretty sharp in it. So I'm very excited about that story. Uh, next, we got Old Man Quill. I love this sarcastic jokester in space, and hopefully he turns into a sarcastic, grumpy jokester in space. 
I hope they don't change him too much where he's all sad and depressed that we still get some good humor out of this as well as good action pad stuff. Um, again, the art in it's pretty clean and we get an appearance with um, Rocket. Old Rat Rocket or Trash Panda Rocket, Rocket Raccoon, what, whatever your favorite name for him is. Um, he makes an appearance in this too, so I'm kind of happy to see that. Um, because they've always done very well at bantering off of each other. Uh, next, Uncanny X-Men. This is the super size issue of number 11 with, and I went with the Live Field uh, cover on this. Looks like he's getting a little better at drawing uh, things. A little bit more anatomically appropriate. Uh, I haven't found anything out too weird on this one. Um, except for he's got Popeye forearms. That was kind of weird. But, you know, it is what it is. He's doing the best he can. Um... Man, I hope this does not let me down. We're expecting uh, Scott Summers to do something great in this as Cyclops. Uh, we're expecting to kind of elevate this story, and I really hope that's what happens in it. I've been very critical of Uncanny X-Men lately, and I'm waiting for them to prove me wrong. Uh, that's what I've been waiting for. And hopefully they do it in this story here. Uh, next, um, just kind of an offshoot thing. I was just kind of interested when I saw the summary for it, and it's Vindication. Um kind of deals with racism and what it looks like and how do you walk that thin line when you're in law enforcement you know so we'll take a read um but somebody recommended it to me maybe i can get some perspective on it maybe we'll find something interesting in it i don't know we'll find out uh next x23 really liking this story right here basically it's talking about what is family and how people are interconnected and are clones really connected in some way shape or form and we get more of that in here with honey badger and x23 and this new assassin character that they're technically related to and how does that play out and Honey Badger's been on this real harp lately about birthdays and family. And you can see she wants that connectiveness. And we're going to find out if that happens in this book or not. Or is X-23 just going to do what they do best? Whip out them claws and take care of the problem. Let's find out. Uh, next we got Age of X-Men. Marvelous X-Men. I had to go with this Storm cover right here. The old punk rock uh, younger Storm character. I just thought that was just awesome coverage right there. Um, unfortunately, I don't know the artist that actually did it. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably one of the sharper covers that I saw for it. And that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. But I really, really thought that was a cool cover. Um, stories, you know, it is what it is in this one. Let's see what happens. Uh, next, we got Young Justice. Really been enjoying this very highly disappointed that I could not get the variant of this but that's okay and we got some genie hex walking around there and it looks like she's got her shotgun back in the first issue um apparently using a shotgun was weird so they gave her some laser because that sounds safer some laser a laser I don't know but on the cover there she is toting her shotgun with her super friends and they're gonna go dispense justice um I'm really excited about the story. It's been really good. And they're bringing back a character that never really got a whole lot of fame from back in the day. And that's Amethyst. And if you don't know about Amethyst, you're not really missing out because it was a horrible comic book back in the 80s. Really didn't get into it in the 90s if it was even a thing there. But they're bringing the character back and they've gave her an update. And hopefully she's kind of cool in it. So excited about that. Uh, also, for just straight cover... Um, I just could not pass this beautiful cover up. And this is Tony Stark, Iron Man number 8. Um, wow. Just, wow. That is great. We all know Tony Stark likes a drink or two, but how much does he bury himself into the drink? And uh, I don't think they'll address that issue in here, but either way, I mean, pretty cool. Uh, so I had to get it. Uh, Avengers number 14, I've been kind of in and out of this lately, but with uh, Black Panther starting his own team within the Avengers of more of a spy ring type of thing, and we get some information about Dracula and where we're at in that, Morbius is in it, we got a lot of good characters in here, uh, both old and new, and vampires and their threat on humanity, and if you're a Blade fan, Blade makes his... Not his first appearance, but his first action appearance in here where he actually does something. So that may be a benefit. 
Let's find out what happens there. Uh, next, I had to get two of them. Daredevil. Back to number one. Here we go, relaunching the story. Of course, I had to go with this more artistic style. And my wife likes Scotty Young, so she made me pick that up. Not that she reads the comic book, but she just loves Scotty Young's work on the covers. That's her thing. So why not? You make the wife happy, I can get away with going over budget on comic books. Shh. Don't tell her that's my plan. All right. Next, we got Immortal Hulk number 13. Man, is this been a story here and what is hell and how it affects people. And is it a mental thing? Is it an actual place? This is asking some really theological questions about one's belief in the bad, I guess. And um, the narrations have been very, very cool in this. However, in this issue, I think the narrations have been cut down a little bit. Um, and it's just mostly dialogue, which I, I, I'm kind of glad about that because it can get a little deep when it's narration. Uh, some other finds that I found, I was able to get my hands on not one, but two of the Target exclusive Primal Age 100 page comic giant right there. Got myself two of them. Uh, no, I don't plan on flipping these because um, apparently in our area they're pretty regular to find. But I know some friends that couldn't make it out to get it. And so I went ahead and picked them up one. And my ultimate find of the week, which sure were there, is yes. You saw it on my Instagram account. So I'm going to show you here on YouTube. The Flash, number 137. The first appearance of Vandal Savage. Um, I did not pay $55 for this comic book. I don't pay full price. I knew. Got a sweet deal on this from the, my local comic book shop, Zeno's Books, down in Chesapeake, Virginia. He hooked me up with this copy right here. And, and it's a pretty decent copy. You can tell it's been read. Uh, but to get the first appearance of Vandal Savage, I mean, that's, that's something there. And most people didn't even know it was actually in a Flash book. So that's pretty cool, too. So, yeah, that's my old school book of the week that I found. Uh, what do I have coming in? I have Prodigy, the black and white cover, and a few other ones that I just can't think of off the top of my head. But don't worry, I will have them by Blaster to Stash at Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Live chat live reviews, tell us we're wrong, tell us we're right, whatever the case may be, you're more than welcome to swing by. Also, C2E2 is coming up. Please let us know if you're going to C2E2 so we can get a message out to you about some of the meetups that we'll be doing and where we will be at at C2E2 so you can swing by. We'll probably do some live showings there, um, maybe some videos, back footage, whatever the case may be. If you want to be part of that, let us know. Also, I know that I do not always on a regular, consistent basis put out video. So if you want to know what my hauls are, there's a little bell down there. If you hit that little bell, I appreciate a thumbs up if that's your thing. And you're always welcome to leave a comment, both agreeing, disagreeing. Maybe you just want to argue. I'm cool with that, too. Uh, so, yeah, C2E2 and... Uh, Maybe doing another auction here soon. I know a lot of people have been enjoying my online auctions. So we're going to go ahead and put some things together and see if we can't launch another one for all you comic book collectors out there that are looking to just fill your boxes with various stuff. I mean, we do everything from Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, Modern Age, even some of that 90s chrome monstrosity nightmare stuff. We throw some of that in there too. So hey. Definitely check that out. We'll be sure to get you the link as soon as we get it. Of course, my YouTube followers always get the link first on our videos. So make sure you hit that little bell down below so you know when that happens. Other than that, I don't really have much else to say. So I'm going to shut up and go and, I don't know, figure out how to fill my wallet back up. Holy crap, it was a long week. But hey, guys, if nobody's complimenting you today, you're doing a great job. You look marvelous. Keep up the good work. And I am out of here. Y'all have a good day. Bye.